Well, hello there and welcome to uh, a new Kerbal Space Program video, which is going to be a building video. As you can see, the launch is not going to be up until almost 10 minutes into this video. That is because uh, I'm going to be using some of the new uh, robotic parts from the Breaking Ground uh, mod, uh, the DLC, I should say, not a mod. <laughs> Um, and I really like it. Uh, the idea of this rover is going to be that we're going to use the same rover and go first to the moon. Uh, drop down the rover, drive around a little bit, have some fun, plant a flag maybe. You know, the usual. And then we're going to pick it up again uh, with some robotic parts. Uh, and then we're going to fly it to Minmus, do the same thing there, and then take the Kerbals back again, so they can do more missions, of course. Uh, and I'm building this vessel, or this rover, uh, as light as I can. Uh, I mean, it has to look nice, but uh, I also wanted to make it very light, because the new robotic parts, I mean, they're good. They're way better than uh, before, when you just had the mods. Um, but they still have a bit to work on, I think. They're still a bit wobbly, and uh, I haven't figured out if you can uh, maybe auto strut them at some times and then take away the auto struts and make it work anyways. I don't know. Um, but without the auto strut, uh, it's gonna be wobbly. Uh, please comment if you know anything about this, if you can make it more uh, steady in any way. I tried with uh, using normal struts, but they, I thought it were going to work like uh, decouplers. Because when you decouple something that have struts to the part that you are decoupling, it the struts will just disappear magically. But that did not happen with the, uh, <laughs> uh, with the robotic parts. I thought they were just going to disappear as fast as I started using the robotic parts, but that did not work. But we are coming in here now, and uh, we are soon done with this uh, this rover. We have some lights on, we have some batteries, we're gonna put on some science experiments here, not because I need them, I'm playing on, uh, uh, and, uh, on a sandbox save. But it's always, it's always fun to imagine that you could use these someday in a real save. Uh, and these storage units, I actually removed them later, I think. Uh, but anyways, now we're almost done with this. Uh, we have everything we need. And now we're going to start thinking about where we're going to put uh, the docking ports for the arm. Uh, that's going to put us down to the surface. I thought about something like this, having two. So it would be a little bit more sturdy. But as you can see there, it didn't go well. Then I thought of another concept, uh, like you saw you just there, <laughs> a little bit quick, where I uh, was supposed to like, kind of hide the, uh, the docking port away. Uh, but I don't like clipping through parts and stuff like that, and that would have had to uh, clip through some parts to make it look nice, and then it would have just... Uh, no, it wouldn't have been good. Uh, so instead I took a different approach, and this actually uh, was a very good approach. It worked perfectly, and, um, well, perfectly uh, is a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> you will see how it goes. It, it, it went. It went. Uh, and right now, just uh, trying to uh, do a replica of what I have down there, but of course I can't do it exactly. And here is what I thought about later, I could have put struts between those parts, uh, between just the structural parts, and that would probably have made it a little bit more uh, steady. But I, uh, of course, I remembered that like yesterday when I was <laughs> when I was clipping this video together or editing this video. Uh, that's when I realized it. And now we're just putting this rover inside uh, this huge vessel that I built earlier. Um, with one of the, uh, what are they called? A bay? Or something? 
well, the cargo bay, yeah, of course, cargo bay, thank you. Uh, and we're putting a probe core on top here, just uh, so we can land this easier, because we're gonna land this vertically, so uh, we're gonna have the rover's wheels pointing down, so we can just lower it and it will drive off on its own. That's, that's a plan anyways, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll probably see how it goes in the next episode, since this is, like I said in the beginning, mostly a video for building this thing. And I actually, I, I try to not use that many mods, um, but in the end, as you saw with the landing gear there, I had to actually use uh, some modded parts to have some decent uh, landing legs on this. And now just uh, doing a simple, uh, well, uh, <laughs> a simple timeline uh, or a track, you would call it probably, uh, a simple track that I can play that's just gonna lower this down and then make it go up again, depending on which way I, I play it. Um, and I don't know if I showcase that in any way later or if I cut that out, but we'll see later. Uh, and now, yes, I used the modded legs um, from Reusability Pack, I think it's just called. Uh, and this is these legs are a replica of um, the uh, Blue Origins New Shepherd, I think it's called. The first rocket they have. Uh, that lands uh, on these landing legs um, with the whole rocket, just like SpaceX, but uh, SpaceX actually send things out to space to stay there. Blue Origin, as far as I know, they have just done um, suborbital flights so far, but they are gonna put people out there further, I know that. Uh, and now we're putting on some RCS thrusters so we can steer this later. And oh, it was a little bit unstable. Um, I actually put the uh, dampening and the uh, springs on those landing legs up to full capacity or as hard as they can be. So uh, it wouldn't flip around like that. Because these landing legs are actually very hard to land with on... Uh, well, any planet, because they are very, very bouncy, so you really need to be slow. And here I realized a little problem. My uh, vessel was a little bit too heavy, but uh, I just took down the dampening strength and then I could pick it up. And I thought, since uh, you can now choose how strongly they, uh, the docking ports are gonna dock to each other or attract each other and um, with like I think it's some magnetic thing magnets sucking them together maybe I don't know <laughs> but to make that uh, you, you can now choose how much they are gonna uh, drag themselves towards each other or if they're not gonna drag themselves towards each other at all because sometimes that can mess you up uh, and now we're just building Actually, speaking of SpaceX, the, this vessel is kind of uh, inspired by SpaceX, and it's almost an SSTO, except that I want I wanted to have some cool uh, some cool uh, thrusters on the side here, some solid rocket boosters, just to have that little extra oomph uh, when you try to put something in orbit, uh, and also it's more fun to have more stages, I think, in general. And just putting on some extra wings here. And of course we are going to recover this whole stage. Like I said, it's almost an SSTO rocket this. Uh, and now I realized that I, uh, <laughs> I hadn't changed the main part to anything that was pointing upwards. Uh, and now I also realized I had my staging wrong. <laughs> so listen to Scott Manley kids. Always check your staging. So I had to do all of that over again. Uh, but now we are finally off. And we are rising through the skies. Very, very fast, I will say. And then 
we were gonna try to uh, time warp some and you can see that that did not go as well as I planned. I couldn't change to it but as you might have seen there <laughs> the whole rover just flew out uh, of the fairing. I don't know how that happened but I mean it's Kerbal Space Program. Anything can happen and uh, like I said, I think it's because of those robotic parts that are not strutted and they kind of are a bit wobbly, yeah. So they can do, or stuff like that can happen sometimes where it just, yeah, floats off or flies off. But now everything is here. I'm just checking now that everything is uh, intact, that nothing broke on the way up. It was breaking there to stop the wheels from spinning around and uh, also trying out uh, the action group uh, to take it out and in once again uh, and it works perfectly and I had that set uh, uh, number one was to play um, to play the whole thing uh, the edit the track edit and two was to change the direction uh, so it just plays it backwards, which is very handy when you do things like this. And now we are in orbit. And now we're just going to leave this thing uh, in orbit to just float around here a little bit. And uh, we're going to try and recover this, uh, this second stage. And here we go, trying to land this. And I also wanted to try and land all of these um, first time. Uh, as long as most parts were still there, <laughs> I uh, count it as a success. And for the first time didn't go that well. I blew up a couple of engines here and uh, also uh, I lost a wing and one of the air brakes on the landing. But this will be it for this video. In the next one, I will, well, I will continue this. I will send up some crew and uh, a fuel, some fuel to get me to the moon <laughs> and i'll hope you'll be watching that video thank you so much for watching and goodbye